If you are a Python developer and ever faced difficulty in understanding decorators, you need to watch this video. Trust me. So what are decorators in Python? Decorators are basically tools that help you modify or extend the behavior of your function. So basically, let's say we have written different REST endpoints, which are accepting the request from REST clients, right? Through REST APIs. So we want to validate those REST requests. And from the request, we can take out the tokens and validate if the token is valid. Now, this can be easily done with the help of decorators. Like you can write a common decorator and offload ev and decorate every REST endpoint that you have written and offload this particular work of validation, validating the request through that decorator. There can be other solutions to it as well. Like you can create a separate function and then call that function in the beginning of your REST endpoints that you have written, or there can be other solutions as well. But I feel decorators are one of the best solutions in such cases because they, they keep your functions clean. And another example for this could be, let's say from the same REST endpoint, you want to log some important information that will help you debug. Either you can put a log statement in the beginning of every function, every REST endpoint that you have written, or you can simply decorate every function with a decorator, which is pretty simple, pretty clean, and that, that will do the job for you. So let's see a more technical definition of decorators. So what, what we are saying is decorators are basically functions that also accept a function and also return a function. It should not be a function, so it should be function. So what does this mean? If this seems confusing, let me tell you. So basically decorator is a function that is going to accept an argument as a function and is going to return a function. But we will see what these functions are. So let's see what's happening here. So before that, I would like to set, tell you that if you don't know the concept of closures, please go ahead and watch my video in this particular playlist, which is named as nested functions and closures before, before, before continuing with this video. If you know closures already, then that's fine. You can simply continue. So let's see. This particular thing is a function which is defined and named my decorator. So as I said, decorator is a function, which means this particular thing is a function. It accepts a function. So it is accepting a function here. And it also returns a function here. So it is returning a function. This particular function is defined within the decorator's body. So it's a nested function that decorator is returning here. So at this point, I have created this function here. This is our function that we have created just now. And we want, we would like to decorate this with the decorator that we have created right here. So what we are going to do is for now, let's try to do one thing. So we are just going to do this. So let's try to understand this particular statement that I've written here. This calls the decorator, which is right here, and passes our function to it. This is the function that we have created. This is our function, and this is a decorator. So what decorator is going to do, it is going to accept our function here, which means now you understand the function that decorator is accepting is our function that we have created that we want to decorate. And decorator is going to return this inner function. So which means whatever is going to return here is going to be replaced with this inner function. So after this, if I call my func like so, then it is going to invoke the inner function. So that's what essentially decorator does. It has replaced our function with this particular inner function. Now, this function is also invoking our function here that has been accepted as an argument here. It's been invoked inside this particular inner function. Now that's where the power of decorator comes. It is, it can do anything before invoking our function and it can do anything after invoking our function like here or here. That's where we say that decorator extends the functionality or behavior of our functions because it has this power of doing some pre-processing or post-processing on our functions. So if we have to do any logging before our function is invoked, we can log something here. If we have to do post-processing on the results that we are received, for example, let's say whatever the result we get, we want to sanitize that result. 
a result may have some garbled text. We want to remove them. You can remove it here with the help of decorator and you don't have to replicate this code all over in your code base. You simply create a function decorate it with this decorator. I hope now you understand this. Now let's see that the syntactic sugar that is offered by Python while you decorate a function. So basically you don't have to necessarily do this every time the way I have written it here. You can simply use this at the rate symbol and say and Python is going to do this or this particular step for you. You do you just have to write this. So it makes your code a lot a lot more cleaner. So now let's move on to some examples, real examples, and execute them. Before we move ahead with the example and understand more about decorators, one thing that I would like to tell you and take a pause here a little. So we have been seeing till now that decorators are functions, they accept function and they, they and they return functions. And we have been implement and we have seen the implementation of decorator as a function. But it is important to note that decorators can also be implemented as classes. And this is a reason why I would like to modify our definition about decorators a little. So it should be like decorators are callables that accept a callable and return another callable. Callable is more generic term here. So if you are getting confused, then probably ignore what I just told you and you can consider whatever we have studied originally. You will understand more about this gradually when you know about the class decorators. Anyways, let's continue. So let's move on and see this example. This is a function that I have created uh, called make request. This function emulates the API call. So basically it, it doesn't actually make an API call. It simply sleeps and immediately prints that uh, API call was successful. So it sleeps for three seconds as if the entire turnaround time for the API call was three seconds. And then finally it returns a dictionary that says that status signifying that the status of the API call was successful. And then this is the data that was returned from the API call, like which was the name and then age. So that's the entire essence of this function. But what we want to achieve here is that we want to measure the execution time of this function. And we would like to measure the execution time with the help of a decorator. So I have created a decorator right here. So this is called as like compute time. As I've told that decorator is implemented as a function here. It accepts a function and it returns a function. So I'll just uh, hide this definition. So this is the entire body of the decorator. So it accepts a function and then it returns a function here, which is the inner function of the decorator itself. So this is the this is the function that's getting returned from here. That function is also called as closure. So anyways, so this function, whatever is getting passed here as an argument to this particular decorator is the function for which we want to measure the execution time. And what that function will be, that function will be our make request function. So, and now this func is getting invoked in the body of this particular get time function. So what this get time function does, it calculates the start time, then it invokes our function. This function is same as the make request function that we just saw. This is not same, actually it will be pointing to the make request. So once this function is called, actually the make request function will be executed. So it, once the response is returned from the make, make request function, it actually ca calculates the end time and then prints the difference between end and its start. And this is the entire execution time of this that particular make request function. And it also res returns the response returned by the make request function. So that's what this particular inner function is going to do. Now we know that after decorating our make request function with this particular compute time decorator, whenever we will invoke our make request function, this is the function that will get executed, right? So let's decorate our function with uh, the compute time decorator and we will see what happens next. So let's come here and let's decorate this with the compute time. Now, this is the function, we have decorated it and now let's invoke our function. And once we invoke our function, this particular inner function is what we expect to get executed. This is the function which will call our make request function and measure its execution time. So let's call that. Let's call our make request function. So let's say I'm calling make request function and I will just capture the response here. So let's try to run this and see what happens. So seemingly it's taking that pause of three seconds. And yes, after three seconds, as I said, after three seconds, it will immediately print API call was successful. And then this gets printed. So where is this print coming from? Total time taking, to to total time taken. It's coming from here, which is after, just right after uh, the make request function was called here. Uh, total time taken is printed here. And the response that we are returning 
is the same response which was returned from the make request function. So if we print the response here, so what do we expect to get printed, to be printed here? We will see the same dictionary object here. So let's print that, sorry. And yes, you see that this success data, whatever is this particular object showing, it is the same as this particular dictionary. So I hope that you understood uh, how this example is working. So with that, I hope that you learned about decorators and you have a better understanding about them. If you still have doubts, please put it in the comments. I'm going to help you out. Also, if you want to cover more topics or more areas of decorators, like understanding about stack decor stack decorators, parameterized decorators, and more, I have an entire playlist de dedicated for decorators, which I'm going to link down in the comments and in the description. You can go ahead and check them out. So with that, see you.